The RTX 3000 series are absolute monsters in terms of power, and this is true for both flagship RTX 3080 and even more monstrous 8K capable RTX 3090. The RTX 3070, on the other hand, is undoubtedly the most interesting graphics card of its generation. It has sufficient power to merge 4K gaming at outstanding frame rates, as well as enabling ray tracing. It may even be able to compete with the flagship of the previous gen, the RTX 2080 Ti. And in today's video, we're going to go head to head with the 3070 and 2080 Ti. Stay tuned. The RTX 2080 Ti made its debut in September 2018, and the Founders Edition was initially sold for well over $1,200. The starting price for customized models was $1,000, although those were with lower frequencies and inferior cooling were not as expensive as that. The most expensive and fully customized versions would cost you anywhere from $1,400 to almost $2,000. At the end of 2020, the 2080 Ti is no longer being manufactured and as a result, the supply of a new card is extremely limited and the costs are well beyond unusual. Right now, the price of a secondhand version ranges anywhere from $450 to $750, while the starting price for the 3070 is just under $500. Performance The RTX 3070 is still an extremely potent graphics card. The RTX 3070 has a significantly higher total number of CUDA cores, but things aren't quite as cut and dry as the numbers may seem. The INT32 cores are included in the count for the 3000 series graphics cards and can function as more conventional FP32 CUDA cores whenever the situation calls for it. This indicates that the RTX 3070 contains 2,944 standard CUDA cores and an additional 2,944 CUDA cores which are capable of serving the same function. This improves your gaming experience significantly, and with the 3070's improvements, you'll definitely have high-res graphics which will make your games look more detailed with improved lighting and shading effects. The 2080 Ti, on the other hand, has 4,352 CUDA FP32 cores and an additional 4,352 INT32 cores. This indicates that it does possess a substantially higher total of CUDA cores than the 3070 does, but they are a lot less versatile. They're also built on a design from the previous generation and do operate on a lower clock speed, which means that in many games, the RTX 3070 might very well pull ahead of them, especially when it can harness more of its multifaceted cores for the FP32 configurations. However, the 2080 Ti is no slouch and it has a good chance of maintaining a performance edge in situations and games, which emphasize more on the INT32. Because of its greatly increased memory bandwidth and its memory bus, the 2080 Ti also features a significantly increased memory bandwidth. At much lower resolutions such as 1080p and 1440p, it's unlikely that this will play a much bigger role. However, at 4K, which is the resolution for which the 2080 Ti was developed expressly, it may make a slight impact. Since certain games already require up to 10 gigabytes in order to run 4K resolution, the 2080 Ti may soon have a performance edge over the 3070, in particular, with AAA games running at the 4K resolution. Also, the PCI Express 4.0 is a nice addition to the 3070, but given that the 2080 Ti wasn't able to fill a 16x PCI Express 3.0 slot, it's not going to be able to do much more than help free up lanes on motherboards for any additional add-on cards and storage devices. Ray Tracing and DLSS Ray tracing is one of the dominants which the 3070 holds a significant edge in. Despite having a lower total number of RT cores, they are all of the second generations, which allows them to perform at 1.7 times the level of their earlier counterparts. If anything else does remain the same, this would make the 3070 the equivalent of 78 RT cores from the first gen and an increase in RT performance that is 15% higher than that of the 2080 Ti is certainly nothing to scoff at. TensorCore's performance for deep learning super sampling may be comparable across the two graphics cards, despite the fact that the 3070 uses a third gen TensorCore design, which is capable of operating up to 2.7 times faster than that of the performance of the 2080 Ti first gen. 
However, because both can fully use DLSS 2.0 for intelligent upscaling, then making them both capable of 4K cards really is not all that bad of a comparison. Gaming Benchmarks TechSpot had ran these two GPUs across various games so as to determine their gaming performance. In their testing setup, they used an MSI MEG Z490 ACE motherboard, an Intel Core i9-10900K processor, 16 gigs of RAM at 3466 MHz, and an Intel 760P solid-state drive, plus a bespoke water cooling system. So let's see what the results show and which one of these GPUs came out on top. Far Cry New Dawn in Far Cry New Dawn, the RTX 2080 Ti did come out on top, but only by a few frames at 1080p and 1440p, and a little more at 4K. This means that the 3070 is absolutely the card you should be buying, given its price, and it will devastate the new and secondhand pricing of Nvidia's old flagship. Far Cry New Dawn is a relatively easy title to tame on gaming PCs. Wolfenstein Youngblood in Wolfenstein Youngblood, the situation was almost similar. The 3070 achieved a slightly higher average frame rate, but it was a handful of frames slower than the minimum 99th percentile whenever running at 1080p. At 1440p, the two were within the margin of error that we'd expect to see, and at 4K, the 3070 had a slight advantage over the competition. Borderlands 3 Borderlands is a game that's more challenging than Wolfenstein and Far Cry, but once again, the two GPUs are on par with one another at 1080p and are quite close to one another at 1440p and 4K. Shadow of the Tomb Raider This test had revealed that the Shadow of the Tomb Raider performed the best on the 2080 Ti at 1080p and 1440p with obvious leads for the older card. This was the case despite the absence of any ray tracing or DLSS features. The RTX 2080 Ti did maintain a command lead over DLSS and ray tracing whenever both were activated at the 4K resolution. However, considering it's only a third of the price, the RTX 3070 unquestionably comes out on top here. Lastly, Metro Exodus. Yet another struggle with no obvious victor, the two graphics cards were almost indistinguishable from one another up until we tested 4K, which at that point, the 2080 Ti did take a slight lead. The RTX 3070, along with Amphere in the 3000 series, represents a significant generational jump whenever compared to its predecessors in this context and in general. Power and Cooling Nvidia has equipped both the 3090 and 3080 with full cooler designs from the most recent generations, and this design features a push-pull fan configuration that spread across a larger integral heatsink and a newly designed PCB. The RTX 3070 took a much more conventional approach here, as the Founders Edition PCB featured a V-shaped cutout, and the card was configured with two fans. It is somewhat more demanding than its predecessor, the 2070, with a power draw of 220 watts, but it's still 30 watts less demanding than the 2080 Ti, which requires 250 watts with the Founders Edition. The cooler that comes on the 2080 Ti is completely enough, providing sufficient performance to assist the card in reaching the boost clock speed without ever being excessively loud. And, depending on what you're looking for, custom fan curves can help boost performance while also reducing noise levels. So, which one is better? New architects that use the second and third generation of RT and Tensor Cores help to enable the 3070 outperform the 2080 Ti in various settings in terms of overall performance. Based upon the 3070's memory constraints, it's possible that, in the long run, it's going to be more suitable for a high frame rate of 1440p rather than 4K. The two most obvious factors to consider here when upgrading are price as well as availability. When it was first released, the 2080 Ti was virtually unobtainable, and its price was in no way compatible to that of the 3070. You might be able to find a good, gently used 2080 Ti, that is, if it's being sold for approximately 500 or 600 bucks. Then at that point, it's an investment that's worth making, and in that case, you should go for the score of 3070. So, there you have it, folks. That's the lineup of the 3070 versus the 2080 Ti. Thanks for watching today's videos, and of course, if you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content just like this, and don't forget to ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more content updates from us. Until next time, folks, stay safe and stay informed.